Bell in Virginia. <laughs> You're live with Eric and Jamie. Hey. How are you doing? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Hi. Hey. <laughs> what do you want to talk about today? Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to try to be as uh, concise as I can okay. so I don't ramble. Uh, um, don't but be like just me. Just to give a little bit of back. Yeah, don't be like him. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give a little bit of background, I was raised uh, in various Baptist denominations, uh, Independent Baptist, Southern Baptist, and for a while in my teenage years, my father was a pastor of a church, so I'm a pastor's kid. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Right. Oh, wait. So, you are a pastor now, or you were a pastor then? No, no. My father was a pastor. I was just a pastor's kid. Oh, Okay. Nope, not a pastor. But um, so I was, you know, obviously raised pretty religious. uh, And I have moved away from home, had to move back home. And now I'm out on my own again, hopefully for good. And, you know, just once you move away from home, you can kind of develop your own ideas. And um, I feel like in the past year, I really started to really have that freedom, explore different ideas, meet different people from different walks of life. And I actually started dating somebody who Ooh. is a non-believer. Ooh. <laughs> if he's doing better. I'm telling Jesus. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but uh. um, he's super sweet. He's super great. He's very patient with me. And um, you? he actually suggested... Uh, when we first started dating, because we would, you know, have some debates about our beliefs or his lack of belief in my belief and what that means for our relationship. And he was like, well, why don't we read the Bible together and we can talk about it? And I was like, okay, cool. So we started reading it together. And it was really the first time I ever um, Mm -hmm. sat down to read it all the way through. And I was very shocked. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, I'm kind of going through a little bit of a faith crisis, if you will. And I was wondering, um, let me look at my, I wrote down my question so that I could uh, word it right and I wouldn't sure. fuck it up. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm pretty sure I'm on the verge of transitioning out of religion honestly okay. um i think i really feel like the only thing tethering me here anymore is like the fear of damnation honestly like that's a- i, I kind of feel like that's the thing holding me here still but um i have a lot of friends who still go to church family who still goes to church uh still very religious and i was wondering is there a way to transition out of religion into non-belief without going through that angry atheist phase <laughs> where you're just kind of mad about being tricked so, and so, you know wasting yeah. 20 plus years of your life so uh i i don't know of a systematic way but i know that it um happens what i will say is it's a bit like asking the question is there a way of going through a breakup without um you know crying your face off and eating a pint of ice cream Uh, The answer is yes, but I don't know of a systematic way to guarantee that. What I can say is the fact that you're thinking about it in advance and wanting to avoid that is probably a good indicator of whether or not it's going to happen and dominate the way that you you see your exit from this. But um, yeah, there's going to be strong feelings and the actions that you take in response to that are definitely something that... Um, you're you're able to influence and to a large degree, though not entirely, control. Yeah. Um, and something tells me that there's a person that's close to you that you have a good relationship with that's going to understand and be there for you and help. And um, if not, we have that community. Yes. And we've been there and been that for each other. Yeah, call um, in here. Yeah. Uh, but it sounds like you've got a boyfriend doing that. Yeah. Well, that's um, what I was alluding to. Yeah, sure. I know, but I want to yeah. throw that in. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bell. <laughs> Um, it, it completely depends on you and it's different from person to person. There are some people who, uh, were only mod- you know, slightly religious. It really didn't play a big part in their lives. And when they left, it didn't have a big impact. There are other people who lost everything because of it. And one of the reasons we say it's okay to be angry is because you can own your own feelings. You can own your emotions and, and your own recovery process. Uh, when you talk about fear of hell, it's going to take time 
but it will get better, right? Um, it will get better. It's, it's so deeply drilled in that you may logically know it doesn't exist, but still have that fear. And it's the same kind of fear that you see when you go to a, uh, like, like a pound and you close a door loudly and if several dogs, you know, will jump and out of fear, you know, it, there's this, there's this inbuilt response, this fear response, and it just takes time, but slowly it will start to lose its, its grip on you. Um, and now as far as the anger and the hate, uh, Bell, I, I was on the phone with somebody last week who is, who was in their eighties and, um, they, they, they wanted to call in and they said, hey, I'm just now coming to terms with the fact that I'm an atheist and that I'm gay. And he said, I lived a life without ever getting to learn and explore those parts of who I am. And I may not get to explore those things, but I'm so hateful that I lost the chance to live a life, a full life. And he said, how can I not be so hateful? What, what, what do you tell somebody like that? I can't give him years of life to, to explore. I can't give him time to, to get married and, 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 and go 20 years, you know, uh, with, with, a, with a partner. I can't. But what I could tell him is that you're talking to people who genuinely believe it. They're using the best tools that they have at their disposal and they're not trying to deceive you because they are as well deceived. And because of that, you don't need to be angry at the people as much as the structure of it. You know, um, you can still love the people around you and by doing so, you can be a good example of the fact that you can still be a loving, caring daughter, niece, cousin, friend, neighbor, coworker, and in time, maybe be a good example of that fact for other people, you know, when they find out that maybe their kid is an atheist or that uh, their neighbor is an atheist and they'll be less likely to shun them, right? Um, being that good person, it actually does take away some of the hate um, because it gives you something to work toward. Uh, th there's a much bigger movement and unfortunately our movement doesn't have a lot of... Um, Oh, while well, the camera's zoomed in, I'll pull out the book of Eric. It's blank. Right? That I, I, if, is. If, if we have a pamphlet and you walked up to, you know, door to door and said, hey, have you heard of atheism? And then I hand you a trifold and it's just a blank piece of paper. I mean, what do we have to promise? Right? And, and, and the funny thing is, is that's not a bad thing because it also does not have on it in-belt vehicles for bigotry, hate, hatred, and, and the subjugation of, of women and minorities. Like, that's fucking awesome. But not everybody's going to get that. But you can be that example for other people. And that could be something awesome to strive toward. I hope that helps. Yeah, I think part of what is is so difficult is <laughs> I have these like this kind of internal anger but also like the people around me are not like the religious people around me they're not like hateful or mean so I'm like my anger isn't directed at these people but they're also still <sighs> like I hesitate to say part of the problem but you know what I mean right like, I know exactly what you mean <laughs> I uh I am not close to any religious person that has uh, learned even what I do on my weekends, or well, it's now basically every day, learned what I do with my time and energy and effort and why they haven't seen me um, uh, recently, why no one has seen me recently. Um, I haven't been around any of them that have heard that and then uh, preached at me at length um, or... Uh, you know, denounced my existence, etc. I've been very fortunate in that regard. And it's very difficult for me to turn around and say, yes, please stop giving your church money uh, because you're making it worse, uh, particularly depending on that church. But um, yeah, I'm still out here working hard. And uh, in the immediate after that math of uh, my deconversion, it was le less emotional for me. But um, when I had the brief sort of cursory discussions with people that I know that are important in my life 
and bumped into them going, oh, well, you know, sure, there's problems with the Catholic Church, but, you know, they, they, just, they just need more healing in, in reference to uh, Catholic priests that have raped children and the, the church that had defended them. That pissed me off more than anything else. And learning to find a way of still living constructively and not being consumed by, holy fucking shit, people I've known for years uh, are forced by these categorically unreliable sets of epistemologies and beliefs to jump instinctively to the defense of child rapists uh, has been a process, and I think it's gone very well. But what I would say is don't be afraid of how you feel, right? Feelings are not wrong. Um, but it, and, and trying to treat them that way is, is going to make basically everything worse. So learning to process feelings, whether it's sadness or anger or love, uh, is just part of the human condition. And what I can say is there's these two guys that do a show uh, every Sunday at uh, 1 p.m. Central. One of them's a total asshole. The other guy looks like a uh, uh, Amish. Uh, to you be don't honest. look Amish at all. <laughs> um, the <laughs> uh, and the <laughs> you look like you're going to build a chair. I look like I'm from Austin. You That's look, what you I, know, look like. you look I look like. like you look like you are ready right. to raise a barn. Anyway, <laughs> Bell, the caller on the thing. The this show exists. We've got our social media. A barn. We have the, the ways of contacting us. See, and Take he complains care. when I hope derail you him. We want to hear how you're yes. doing, okay? All right. I, I hope that that helped. Take care. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a barn. You, I'm, okay, okay. You, okay. you, you, you got to work a little bit more to raise a barn. You can build I a chair, I am going to fight you now. I, I will put you on my workout regimen. We're going to get you stacked. <laughs>